Welcome back to the New York Jets franchise, everyone. Today, after an upsetting loss to the Patriots in Foxborough, the Jets take on their other AFC playoff rival, the Cleveland Browns. Now, the Browns sit at 5-4 and four on the season, same as the Jets, but play in a division that is all tied up. So their situation is a little different from that of New York's at the moment. The offense is led by Baker Mayfield and with Nick Chubb and Odell Beckham Jr. make for a very strong scoring crew. The New York defense may have a huge challenge in stopping this trio of highlight reels. On defense, they have Miles Garrett on the line, Joe Schobert at middle linebacker, and Denzel Ward leading the defensive backs. New York may have a little success in the running game since Cleveland has a very weak link at left end. We'll have to see if the Browns give up some yards there or Darnold is called on again to pass the Jets to victory. Let's get to the action on the field as we settle in for the Browns and the Jets on the Football Freaks Sports Network. The speedy Nelson Alexander is in the end zone, ready to receive the kickoff, and he takes a knee. That brings it out to the 25-yard line where the Browns will start. Baker Mayfield, six interceptions, 19 touchdowns, and looking for more today. Nick Chubb takes the opening handoff and doesn't really get anywhere. Loses yard Tackled by Taj Little. And there is Jamal Adams on the stop. And that is another loss of a yard. Third and 12. Across the middle to Chubb goes Mayfield and he does not pick up the first down. The punt fielded by Howard. He has room and is out inside Brown territory at the 49. So excellent field position for the Jets to start out with. And Sam Darnold, only nine touchdowns, which probably gives you a good idea why the Jets are last in the NFL in offensive production. Joe Schobert stops. Jackson up the middle. Now another, no, it's a play action pass and incomplete. Trying to get it down the field to Howard. Darnold throws that incomplete. And there is the defense of the Browns. As the aforementioned Joe Schobert there in the middle of the field. And Ward leading the group at defensive back. Now in third and seven, Darnold drops back, throws over the middle, incomplete. Demarius Randall knocking it out of the hands of Chris Herndon. Now the Browns, another carry. They tried to get it to Jarvis Landry on a jet sweep and that did not work. And down goes Mayfield in the arms of Marcus May, his 30th tackle on the season. So now on third and 19 out of the shotgun, Mayfield throwing long and incomplete for OBJ, broken up by Julian Love. So the punt goes to Howard, fielded at the 42. And he takes a jog to the left and he's all the way down to the 22 yard line and out of bounds. The Jets couldn't have hoped for better field position on both of their first two possessions. Darnold back to pass is incomplete after throwing it into a crowd. It's almost intercepted. Another pass up the hash marks and into the end zone. Touchdown, Chris Herndon. As you can see here on the replay, Marquise Blair 
takes a stance. He is going to go help in coverage on the outside. Doesn't get back in time. Leaves Herndon completely wide open all the way into the end zone. Seven to nothing. Jets and again Mayfield goes down, fumbles the ball and is picked up by the Browns but Demarcus Faulkner gets a sack. Now it's second and 20 and a big hole for Nick Chubb all the way out to the 32 yard line. And third and three. Mayfield back to pass and it goes off the hands of Odell Beckham and that brings up fourth and three and the Browns have to punt it again. Now with just over three and a half left in the first quarter, Jackson takes it up the middle for a six yard gain. Darnold drifts left, gets rid of it just before Miles Garrett lowers the boom and it's a first down out to Chris Herndon. Darnold back to pass again and this one is complete to Arsenault and he's to the 30 yard line of the Browns. First and 10, Jackson heads left, up the numbers and is to the 25 yard line for a five yard pickup. That brings us to the end of quarter number one, seven to nothing Jets. Jackson powers his way to the 20 yard line and a first down. New York keeps it going now inside the red zone and down to the 10 goes Josh Jacobs. And second and inches, Jackson takes it down to the six for a first and goal for New York. Jacobs down to the one, uh oh. Herndon is down, but he is on the sideline and it looks to be okay. We'll have to see how fast he returns to the game. And Jackson into the end zone, not even touched. The blocking has been just phenomenal by the Jets. And this move, uh, this little switch around move that, uh, that they did with the offensive line has just made a world of difference. So after a Cleveland three and out, Rig Howard, oh, ju jukes out. A couple of defenders, Phillips can't hang on, and oh, he, he jumped too soon. He's down at the one yard line, and if he would have just run into the end zone, definitely showboating, got him in trouble, and Trayvon Wesco takes it the rest of the way into the end zone. That gives the Jets a 21 to nothing lead. And it's not even halftime, people. The Browns just don't seem to have an answer for this rushing attack of the Jets. Mayfield gives off to Chubb around the outside, has yardage to the 32. And Sam Hubbard is down, being escorted back to the locker room and we'll have to check on that because that is never a good sign. Chubb carries it up the middle, powers his way for a first down out to the 36. And if I'm not mistaken, that is their first and now give them their second first down of the game. Out to the midfield stripe goes Nick Chubb. Now third and four. Pass incomplete off the hands of Chris Gonzalez. I'm not sure where Mayfield was throwing that, but it was right into the hands of a defender. Now Jackson fumbles the football, picked up by Schobert, and out of bounds at the six yard line. Taken out by Darnold himself. Yeah, but there's a booth review on this play and I have a feeling that it's going to come back. You see there Jackson going down. He is down and the ball comes out afterwards. So yes, 
it will be Jets football. Second and one. Jackson for the first down up the middle to the 33 yard line. Darnold drops back to pass over the middle. Hits Ross out to the 41. And we have the two minute warning. 21 to nothing and the Jets trying to make something happen here before halftime. The screen pass to Jackson. A big gain inside the 30. And he is run out of bounds right there. Darnold back to pass and he is dropped. Avery takes him down all the way back at the 41 yard line. So second and 21. Scrambling around, Darnold throws downfield and it is defensive pass interference on Kirkland Hanna, the slot cornerback in passing coverage and he draws the flag. Herndon gets down to the 26 yard line for a seven yard gain. 56 seconds left. The pass over the middle, complete down to the 10 is John Ross. Darnold is sacked. Miles Garrett gets back to him back at the 21 yard line. So it's now third and 21. The throw into the end zone broken up. Carl Arsenault can't hang on to that one. And Trent Lyon comes out for a 38 yard field goal, puts it through and it is 24 to nothing Jets. And that will take us to halftime. I think the Browns are almost shell shocked by this defensive effort. Minus nine yards passing the ball in the first half for the Browns. Now for a halftime report, let's go to Eurocat Baby. What a scoring explosion with the Jets putting up 17 second quarter points and claiming a 24 to nothing halftime lead. The Jets study of game film really paid off this week because the highlight of the game so far is that New York's defense has been able to hold Cleveland to only 44 yards of offense and a meager two first downs in the entire first half. As far as injuries, New York left in Sam Hubbard, who went out late in the second quarter, has suffered a bruised shoulder and will not be returning today. And pending a full examination, his return is in question at the moment. In other AFC action, the Patriots have opened the door for the Jets again by allowing the Dolphins almost 400 yards of offense and losing by a score of 28 to 14. That, along with a Buffalo win against the Seahawks, means that the Jets could be only a game out of first place in the AFC East if they could hold on for the win today. To see if that happens, we invite you to stay with us because we'll be right back. Welcome back everyone to MetLife Stadium for second half coverage of our game between the Jets and the Browns. The Browns have lacked any kind of spark here in the first half and need to make some serious adjustments in order to slow down this New York defense enough for Baker Mayfield <laughs> to have just a beat or two in order to pass the ball downfield. Will changes have been made in order for that to happen? Let's find out as we start the second half. Jackson, the single setback. Darnold takes it from under center, gives off to Jackson, has the first down around the right side and out of bounds at the 42. Second and seven, up the middle goes Jackson. And does he have the first down? No, they're gonna call him one yard short. And Jacobs picks up the first down with tough running inside the 40 and tackled finally at the 38. Darnold back to pass and is sacked. Miles Garrett gets him back at the 43 for his second sack of the afternoon. Now third and 15. Darnold throws long and it is incomplete. Broken up by Denzel Ward. 
Now Mayfield and company out of the eye formation. The fake to Chubb, and there is Marcus May again for another sack and an eight-yard loss. May with another stop. A safety blitz, and Chubb was stopped in the backfield. A two-yard loss brings up third and 20. The pass over the middle, complete. And it's a first down out to the 31 for Jarvis Landry. Out of the I formation again. The handoff goes to Chubb. Has lots of room out on the left side and finally dragged down at the 42-yard line by Robert Ramirez. But not before getting into jet territory. And a first down. The delay handoff to Chubb is stopped in the backfield by Ja'Kai Polite. The give on second and 13 is to Chubb. He has lots of room, a first down, and finally dragged down by Jamal Adams at the 30-yard line. The rookie Dylan Evans is given the ball, and he's down inside the 10-yard line to the nine, just giving Chubb a breather, and he rips off 21 yards. Slip, slip, slip. Now on second and goal. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Jarvis Landry. Robert Ramirez gets burned off the line of scrimmage. And there was Landry behind the defense and into the end zone for the touchdown. Blake Cashman just not fast enough to get over there to break up the pass. After a successful two-point conversion and a jet three and out. The Browns have it again and OBJ makes the grab inside jet territory. And oh, Baker Mayfield is hit, but he does not get sacked. He called that his arm was in motion and Wilson Makes the catch over the middle and into the end zone. His first career touchdown reception. And it comes against the Jets. They got caught in a 3-4 blitz. And Wilson got open very easily across the middle of the field and into the end zone. Touchdown. Another two-point conversion, and Blake Cashman stops Chubb at the two-yard line. 24-14 is your score. Now in the fourth quarter, Darnold back to pass, throws over the middle short to Jackson, and he has the first down out to the 45. Jackson, the lone setback, gets the carry, out to the right side, the first down stays in bounds and is all the way down to the 34. Excellent presence of mind, keeping that clock running. Now Jacobs, tough running down to the 25. And now on third and one, a fullback run and Jordan Thomas is in there I'm not sure why he was spelling Trayvon Wesco, but he picked it up in fine fashion. Now at the 11, third and three, Jackson takes it all the way inside the five. And William Greedy Williams is down for the Browns and on the sideline looks like he's gonna be okay. Now from the four. Untouched into the end zone goes Jackson again for another score. And that gives him 50 touchdowns rushing the ball in his career. Like I said before, the blocking is just phenomenal in this game. Second and 10 for the Browns. Three and a half left to go and it's complete out to Beckham at the 39-yard line. 
Play action pass downfield and it's intercepted. Jamal Adams picks it off at the 17 yard line and that most likely will give the Jets a victory. All they need to do is get another first down. <laughs> oh my goodness. Darnold runs straight into Miles Garrett. I don't know why he's still in there. Uh, but now they have moved him out of that position and put in some of the second stringers. Jordan Thomas is down and injured, being escorted to the locker room. Oh. And uh, we're going to have to check on that as well. Odom. The number three halfback picks up the first down out to the 28. That brings up the two minute warning. Now Jackson gets a rare carry here in the fourth quarter when the backups should be in the game. He makes a five yard gain, third and five, Odom Gets the final carry of the game for a four yard gain. And that is it. 31-14, the Jets are your winner. Wow, who would have figured that the New York defense would dominate Cleveland this way? With the offensive weapons that Mayfield has at his disposal, I'm surprised that the Browns didn't put in a little better performance than they did. Not to take away from the hard work in preparation for this game that New York obviously had to do, but this was lopsided to say the least. Cleveland did end up getting just under 200 yards offensively, and it looks as if they were trying to mount a comeback for a little bit, but the Jets defense was just too much for him. Darnold was held to just 50% complete, which doesn't surprise me. But like I said, Mayfield at 42% complete really astounds me. I can't hardly believe that. I had really expected the Browns offense to put up better numbers than they did. As far as the running backs were concerned, rookie Dylan Evans had the best per carry average at 13.3, and I see a very bright future for this kid if he can stay healthy. But the day was taken away by Justin Jackson because quite frankly, the blocking was outstanding. In the passing game, no one receiver had just a breakout game, so that was really contained by both defenses. The Jets did get burned a couple of times for long plays, but when the rest of the team played at the level they did, one can hardly see those little flaws. Defensively, the tackle category was dominated by the Browns, and that was to be expected since the Jets' offense was on the field the majority of the time. Where I feel that the Jets' defense was outstanding is in a category that isn't monitored here in Madden, and that was the number of hurries on Mayfield. I know they only got to him a total of three times during the game, but the times that Mayfield let the ball fly early or had to just throw it away was amazing. The pressure was outstanding. Rig Howard had another incredible day returning punts and would have had another score added to his credits if it wouldn't have been for that colossal miscue jumping into the end zone and being touched down at the one yard line. Oh, how he had to be embarrassed by that one. There were a number of players that benefited from progression as a result of this game. Justin Jackson and Rig Howard from the offense as well as Robert Ramirez and Terrell Briscoe from the defense are among the top players getting boosts in their skills. And a note from the standings of the teams in the NFL, the last undefeated team, the Saints at 9-0, and 
were defeated by the Falcons 42 to 21 to go 9 and 1 through their first 10 games of the season. Well, next up for the Jets are the 4 and 6 Cardinals. This could be a game that New York needs to prepare well for one player in particular. And that's Kyler Murray. You just never know what's going to happen when this guy is on the field. Is he going to pass, hand it off, or just run with the ball? Even if it looks like he's going to be sacked, he has the strength and speed to scramble out of trouble and hurt you long down the field with either his legs or passing the ball because he was successful in extending the play just long enough to find someone downfield. I would think that running the ball may be a little bit more problematic this week for the Jets since along with Tack McKinley, the Cards were able to pick up J.J. Watt in free agency. Arizona has benefited this season from his presence since a lot of teams are running away from his direction. The only problem is Tack is on the other side waiting for someone to try running to his side of the field. Then you have former Jet C.J. Mosley in the middle of the field having an amazing season thus far. But even with Buda Baker in the free safety spot, they are lacking a bit with him having a down season. It should be interesting to see if New York prepares well enough or succumbs to looking past Arizona in favor of the Bills game down the road. Now that's going to do it for this week's episode of the New York Jets franchise here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. The New York defense did an outstanding job today, and it's not hard to see why they are the number one defense in the league. The offense is having a real struggle this season, ranked dead last. But if they continue to have games like today against the Browns, you very well may be seeing them rise out of the seller position. The Cards are looking to bounce back from a 16-point loss to the 49ers today, and with Kyler Murray at the helm, they would be very likely candidate to upset the Jets in front of the home crowd here in East Rutherford. To find out if the Jets can get it done, be with us next week back here in MetLife when the Jets host the Cardinals, and until then... For Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day, everyone. <laughs>